Hello everyone. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what a VPN is. Now, when I say VPN, I'm talking about the real network side of a virtual private network. I'm not talking about the VPNs that get advertised commonly on YouTube as it is, about how to protect your ID online and all that sort of business. I might touch on them, but really what I'm talking about is the technology of what the definition of a virtual private network is. And I'm gonna have some um, Raspberry Pis here set up as routers and create a VPN here to demonstrate that. So if you feel like getting nerdy, stick around. First of all, I'll introduce the Raspberry Pis here that are gonna be in this video. Uh, these are set up as routers, okay, so you can see they've got um, two network interfaces on them, uh, except for the end one here, which is just a, a host at the other end of the network. And this black one here connects to my normal network, uh, so I can connect to it from the computer where I'll be doing all the screenshots and stuff. And I've just got them set up as routers. So you can see I've got a USB NIC on there as well as the inbuilt one to give me the two network interfaces. So that's the setup, that's what I'll be using, but I'll be doing everything on the computer on the big screen. I'll start with a network diagram. Now this is the network I use at home, it's just 192.168.1.0 slash 24. That means all the hosts on there will start with 192.168.1 as their IP address. Now on that network there's a host with the IP address of 192.168.1.9. Now that's the machine I'm going to be using here to connect into that first black Raspberry Pi. Okay, and as such that Raspberry Pi is also part of that network. It has an interface 192.168.1.46. Now those hosts are on the same network, so there's no routing required to send packets between them. I'll just put a picture of the uh, setup there so you can visualize it as well as I draw this diagram around it. Okay, so let's say there's another network over here that is the 192.168.2.0 slash 24 network. It can have a bunch of hosts that all start with 192.168.2, but they won't directly be able to talk to anything on the other network because it's a different network. To do that, they'd need a route to get there. So on this router, the thing that's doing the routing, it has an interface on this 192.168.2.0 network as well. So the black router, which is the Raspberry Pi, the black one, it has two network interfaces and each one's part of a different network. Now we can forward packets between those networks and become a router. So as long as the hosts on each network know that they've got to go through the IP address of the router to get to the other one, then they can talk to each other. So the first network, 192.168.1.0, if it wants to get to hosts on 192.168.2.0 network, it knows that it has to go via 192.168.1.46. So we can continue on and do the same sort of thing. On the blue router, I've got an interface which is part of the 192.168.2.0 network. So that can talk with hosts in that network as well. And then it also has another adapter on a 192.168.3.0 network. Okay, so we're joining networks up here. And as long as they know which uh, host to use, in this case, the router IP addresses, uh, we can send traffic around various networks. And so I've got another one here again to connect to yet another network. And on that last network, I've got a host sitting there, which is that red Raspberry Pi at the end. So it's part of the 192.168.4.0 slash 24 network. Okay, I'll start on this machine here, which is the demo host on this diagram. Okay, I've just got a couple of consoles open and trying to lay it out as best I can. So from here, you see that my IP address is 1.9, the one over here. So I can SSH that black router, 1.46 and I can get into it. Okay, so on that black router, I can look at the routes that are available by IP route. And it shows you here that it knows of two networks. It knows of the 1.0 network, which is on its Ethernet 0 device, this one, and the 2.0 network, which is on Ethernet 1, that's this one. Okay, so from there, if I log in down here as well, 1.46, I'll go to that black router, and from there, because it's part of this uh, 192.168.2.0 network, I will be able to connect to this host here, 2.47, because it's on the same, same network. Okay, so if I go SSH 2.47, I'll go into the blue router. Okay, and if I look at its routes, you can see it knows of the 2.0 network, 192.168.2.0, and 192.168.3.0, which is down here. 
Okay, it doesn't know of this network back here, 1.2.168.1.0. And if I go back here, again, back to this demo host, and I try to go there directly, 2.47, so I'm trying to go to the blue router directly from this demo host, it'll say network unreachable. Because remember, in its routing table, this one over here only knows of this network. It doesn't know anything else. It doesn't know how to get to that directly. But the way I got to this a second ago was I went first to the black router and then to the blue router. Okay, now down to the yellow one, I could do a similar sort of thing one by one. So SSH 102.168.1.46 to get into the black router. SSH 102.168.2.47 to get into the blue router. Then SSH 102.168.3.48 to get into the yellow router. Now that's not a direct connection from this uh, demo host here. I'm actually doing a bunch of connections. I'm connecting to here, then to there, and then to there. But to go directly, I would have to set up some routing on these, uh, these routers here and let all the hosts know which way to go. So if I do that, let me just uh, jump back a bit. Okay, get back to the blue one and get back to this host here. Okay, so I'm back at the demo host. If I try to ping the blue router, .2.47, we know it says network unreachable. So to get to that network, the blue router from here, I'll have to add a route to it. So I just go IP route add 192.168.2.0 slash 24, which is this, this network here that we're talking about. And say it's, you get there via 192.168.1.46, okay? So now, if I look at the routing table on this, this demo host here, it of course knows the network that it's on, because it's, it's on there, but I've also told it that to get to the 1.2.168.2.0 network, you go via this host here. So now, if I try to ping uh, the blue router, I won't get a response, but at least it's trying. It doesn't say network unreachable anymore. So what's happening, it's sending it to this router, and it'll be sending it there, Problem is the blue router has to send the traffic back. And as we just saw, it doesn't know how to get to 192.168.1.0 network, which is where this came from. So I'd have to add a route. So IP route add 192.168.1.0 slash 24 via, now I'm on the blue router here, so to get there it has to go via this address here. So 192.168.2.46. Once I add that, you can see the ping start working. So now this network, well, this host on this network knows how to get to this network and this, this host here, this router, knows how to get back to there. So now from this demo host here, I'll be able to SSH that uh, blue router directly. Okay, bang, straight in. So I didn't have to hop I mean, the routing, the packet went via this router, but I didn't have to log into this router and then start a new connection from there. Okay, so so far I've got routing from this network to this, ne well, this network over here. Now, if I want to go to the yellow one, I'll just exit that and start back again. Same sort of thing. I can't ping anything on this three network because, again, if I look at my routing table, it only knows about this one network, two network, don't know about three. So I'll add it. I'll say IP route add 102.168.3.0 slash 24 via the same. Has to go via this thing again. So that's via 102.168.1.46 as well. Now I can try and ping that 102.168.3.48, but it won't ping there. It tries, it sends it here. But you can see, even though I'm trying to ping 3.48, I'll just stop there. I'm trying to ping 3.48 down here, but I'm getting a response from 1.46, which is this router where I send it to, and it's saying not reachable, because on the black router, it doesn't have a route for this. So I'll go ahead and set up all the routing between those routers. Okay, I've just put all the routes on all these routers here. So if I look at the black one, I look at IP route. Okay, we know that uh, 1 and 2 are directly connected, so it knows where they are. And for 3 or 4, it says go via one, um, sorry, 2.47. So for this network and this one, it says send them through this gateway here. Okay, now on this blue router, if I show the, um, the routing table, 
Again, it's directly connected to the 2 and 3 network, but the 1 and 4, well, the 1 has to go via 2.46 up here, because it's that way, and the 4 network, which is over here, has to go via 3.48, which is here. And similar on the yellow one, you know, it's directly connected to 3 and 4, and for the other two, it sends them through this gateway. Now, on the red host here on this network, it's slightly different. All I've done there is put a default gateway. Okay, now it knows its own network, the 4 network, because it's part of it, it's hanging out here. But for any other network, just send it to 4.48. I mean, you don't have to be specific for this one because everything's going to be through that gateway anyway. So that's the default gateway. Okay, so now I have routing set up between all the routers. If I just go back to this, um, this host here, where I am in 192.168.1.9, I'll be able to ping the red host directly. 4.1. Okay, I can ping it. I don't have to log into each device along the way because I have full routing between these routers. What I'm going to do now is set up a VPN and I'm going to set it up between the black router and the yellow router. So what will happen is I'll have a tunnel created which goes through the blue router but there won't be any endpoints there. The endpoints are just the black router and the yellow router. So I'll build up a tunnel and I'll give, that'll, be, that'll create a new interface on each of those routers, so there'll be three interfaces on them, and I'll just give it the IP address of 10.0.0.1 for the black router and 10.0.0.2 for the yellow router. So I'll do that now. Okay, so on the black router here, I'll start the VPN server, and on the yellow router, I'll start the VPN client. So once they establish, you'll see it here in their little output logs, you will see once it establishes, okay, there we go. We have a link now between these two, the tunnel, I should say. So now, if I look at the black router IP route here, I have an extra route. I have, I have it saying the 10.0.0.2, which is down here, is via this tunnel, tunnel zero interface. Okay, that's a new interface that just got made. If I go to the yellow router and have a look at IP route again, it's got the other end. 10.0.0.1 is up here. Now, the traffic that's going through here is UDP. So what I could do is if I just uh, go to the blue router in the middle, I'll just go to the blue router and uh, do a TCP dump of Ethernet 0, Ethernet 1, um, UDP port 1994, which is what OpenVPN uses. If I look at that, and I'll start the... Um, the VPN again. Okay, so I'll start the server, start the client, and just look what goes through the blue router. Okay, as that establishes, when it gets to establishing, we can see some traffic. Okay, and it's marked it as open e VPN. Okay, if I didn't resolve that, I'll just put dash n there, it would come up with the port 1194. Okay, so there's the traffic that's floating around, and it's between uh, 2.46, which is up here on the black router and 3.48, which is the yellow router. So up here on the black router, if I ping the other end of that tunnel, 10.0.0.2, okay, we see pings, but we don't see ICMP on the blue router, we just see the UDP 1194 traffic, okay, for the VPN. So that ping is traveling through the VPN to the other end. Okay, one thing I want to point out is that a VPN isn't necessarily encrypted. I mean, they generally are, but that's not what it's about. It's a virtual network, as in it doesn't really exist on the routers uh, out here, but it gives you a tunnel. It's a virtual network in that sense. And it's, it's private in the sense that you can't just put a packet on here. This router doesn't know about those networks. It's, it's private. The router here only knows about the two network and the 192.168.3 network. It doesn't know anything about this network, the 10.0.0.1, 10.0.0.2 endpoints, it doesn't know about them. So it's private in that sense, and it's virtual because it's just a tunnel that we made. So that is what a, a VPN actually is. Okay, so I'll just start TCP dump on the blue router and have a look at the UDP traffic that uh, OpenVPN uses. Okay, it uses UDP port 1194. And I'll just show that on Wireshark here, just so we can see what goes through. So what I'll do is I'll start the um, VPN server again, and I'll start the client. Okay, and we should see a bit of something come through 
on uh, Wireshark once it establishes. And it gets around to it. There it is. Okay, so the VPN is established and we see the stuff coming through and Wireshark knows it's the open VPN. Okay, there's open VPN stuff in there. It's whinging a bit, but that's all right. You can see, it, you see it's there. So as I said, if I, if I ping that other end again, you'll see, you won't see ICMP traffic going through there. You'll just see open VPN. And because I've got encryption running, you, this, you can't really tell anything from this, okay? But, it, as I said, it doesn't have to be encrypted. If I do something like um, cipher none, okay, and same with the client, you can see it gives nice big warnings up here saying warning there's no encryption and orphan stuff, okay? So it tries to warn you, but we can do it. Okay, once that starts up, I can ping the other end and you can see, well, if I have a look on here, you can see there's the ping, the ping traffic in the clear. Now from the black router in Scapy, if I send a crafted uh, ICMP message and just say your mama was a snowblower, okay, I can send that packet and if we have a look in the um, capture, you can see it in the clear, your mama was a snowblower. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily mean it's encrypted, but it's still a VPN. Okay, because it's still a virtual private network that, you know, its routing tables don't come into any of this stuff that's in the middle. Because there could be there could be hundreds of routers in between, but as far as that packet's concerned, its next hop was the other end. So that's the meaning of a virtual private network in the true sense. And you can use that, uh, you know, if you've got two corporate sites with private addressing, like 192.168 stuff, for example, and you can't route that through the public internet, but you could set up a VPN between your sites and just have your own routing to go through them and you'll have your own virtual private network. Okay, while I'm at home, I'm on the LAN, so I can get to my 192.168.1 addresses because this phone's also on that network. There's no routing involved and I can just go to my internal servers here and do things. But if I get out on the internet, on the WAN, and I'm not on this this network anymore, I wouldn't be able to do that without some connection in. And I'm gonna use the VPN to do that. Okay, so now I'm out in the wild here with the crocodiles and stuff. Obviously I'm not on my home LAN, but I am on the mobile network. So to connect to that internal server, which is a non-routable IP address, the 192.168 address, I just start open VPN on the phone, connect to my VPN server at home, and then I'll have a tunnel through the public internet and be able to connect to my internal IP address host, just like I was there. So I'll do that now. So on the phone, if I start open VPN and connect, okay, I'm connected to my home VPN server, and now I can refresh that page and LibreNMS will come up again. You know the address, if you can see it, is still 192.168.1 address, okay? So that's obviously not an internet address, but I'm connected to it. And of course, if I disconnect my, my VPN and try and refresh it now, it's just not gonna go anywhere. It's just gonna struggle, okay? So you can use a VPN to uh, connect to internal servers when you're out in the wild. So there it is, that's what a VPN is. Now, all these public VPNs that people advertise, uh, they're basically doing the same thing I am here, except that I'm going from my client the phone here to my VPN server at home, whereas those services offer you a VPN server that's who knows where, okay? But your data is gonna pop out of their server anyway. So if you really wanna control your data, you just wanna send it home and use your own ISP, okay? So if you're out and about, you can set up a, a VPN so you can get to your internal network and at the same time, if you are worried about a hotspot, if, even though we use HTTPS for most things, you can still use the same thing and go via your home with an open VPN server rather than paying for some service. But anyway, I just wanted to show you at a network level what a VPN actually is. So have fun with that, and if you've got questions, leave them in the comments and I'll, I'll see if I can answer them. So until next time, take it easy.